Welcome to the Audio Architect Custom Panel Overview video. In this video, we'll cover the basics of what custom panels are, how they are created, and how they can be used. First off, what is a custom panel? A custom panel is a user-defined graphical user interface that may contain some combination of control and monitoring parameters found within HiQ Net devices such as SoundWeb London processors and Crown amplifiers. Custom panels can provide a flexible, cost-effective solution for control within an audio architect venue. Keep in mind, they can be utilized for a wide array of applications. They may be created for the system engineer needing to commission a system who wants to have access to all necessary controls within a single window. They could be generated with the AV technician in mind, providing them access to control and monitoring parameters that are needed on a daily basis. They may be produced for the end user, authorizing them to have control over parameters such as source selection, room volume, or access to a VoIP dialer, all while limiting the access to the Audio Architect venue file. In another video, we'll take a look at how access to the Audio Architect file can be restricted according to user credentials found in the Access Control tool. It should be noted that the use of custom panels do require a PC hosting the Audio Architect venue file or a wireless access point for the use of HiQnet motion control panels from an iPad or iPhone. Let's jump into an Audio Architect design file. Here we already have a BSS SoundWeb London Blue 50 and Crown DCI 2300N amplifier configured for a two room background music system. The Blue 50 is configured to handle the input processing and routing of the audio, while the amplifier is configured to handle the output processing. Now let's take a look at the custom panel options. First, we'll look at the offline design ribbon to find our panel section. There are two buttons for creating custom panels. Clicking here above the new button will create a new standard custom panel intended to be used on a Windows PC. Other options may also be available here depending on what is selected in the venue. As an example, if we select the amplifier in our design and then click on the new option, we find master and monitor panel options specific to that amplifier. Selecting one of these options will automatically generate a panel with controls specific to that panel type. Note that these panels can be generated for multiple selected amplifiers. For our purposes today, let's create a standard custom panel and name it Basic Room Controls. After clicking OK, we will find ourselves in the Custom Panel Designer. At the top of the screen, we find the Custom Panel Designer ribbon with several options for adding controls, copying and pasting parameters, panel creation and activation, parameter layout shortcuts, and parameter linking and readdressing. Next, we have our custom panel workspace that allows us to set up the presentation of the panel, and below we have the panel properties section with several different options. The property options will change dependent upon what is selected in the panel workspace. There are appearance properties such as background color and image options, the design properties allows us to easily rename the panel. Layout and window style properties allow us to control the size and behavior of the panel when it's activated. OK, now before we move on to adding controls, let's first specify what we want to build. In our Blue50's audio configuration, we find a source matrix allowing us to select a source for each of the two room outputs, and a gain end object that allows us to mute and adjust the output level of each room. These sound like controls that are useful to the end user, and it would be nice to have them available in a single panel, so let's make that happen. How do we add existing parameters onto a custom panel? Well, there are several ways. First, let's at least add a text label to identify the room the controls will be available for. To do that, we can either access the control options in the ribbon, or right-click on any empty space in the panel, go to Insert, Basic, and select Text Label. With the text label selected in our panel, we can now access its properties and navigate to the Edit Text button. We can then adjust items such as font and alignment from the text attributes. Using the Appearance properties, you can further customize the label to give it a unique appearance, but for now, we'll stick with the default settings. OK, now we are ready to start adding interactive controls. While we can use the control options found in the ribbon or through the right click method, they can end up requiring more steps than what's really necessary. The quickest way to bring a parameter into our custom panel is to control drag the parameter directly from the processing object's default panel. Jumping over to our Blue 50, let's double click on our source matrix and gain end objects. 
Now back in the custom panel designer, we can hold down control on our keyboard while we click and drag the fader from the gain end channel 1 onto the panel. In order to accurately read where the fader is set, we may want the gain text box. It also allows us to type in a specific level. In addition to control dragging the gain text box, there are another couple ways we can go about adding this using what's already in our custom panel. Consider the gain text box and gain fader to be equal. They are just two different control types representing the same parameter. Knowing this, we can copy the fader, right click, and paste as a text box. If we just wanted a single control for the gain, but wanted to change its type, then we could right click it, choose morph, and select the desired control type. If you don't like something, click undo or use the control Z shortcut to revert back. Just like we saw with the text label, the fader and text box have their own set of properties. The text box will show us the decibel value to the hundredth degree. In the text attributes, we can change this to only display whole numbers. Let's also center align the text. Now let's go ahead and control drag the channel one mute onto our custom panel. We could control drag the channel one source selector, but let's look at another option for adding an existing parameter. Using the Venue Explorer, we'll navigate to the source matrix in our design and we'll simply drag and drop the parameter titled Output 1 Input, or in other words, the channel source selector. Doing it this way, we are presented with several different options of control for this type of parameter. We won't look at them all, but let's select something different from the combo box we typically see by default. Let's select the List Box option. Let's resize the controls appropriately if needed using each of their vertices. Before we move on to looking at any other custom panel options, let's look at one more way of adding an existing parameter to a custom panel. For this example, let's deviate for a moment from what we're currently building. In the blue 50, we find a parametric EQ in the paging microphone signal chain. Let's open it up and imagine we want to add the controls for these three bands to a custom panel. Well, a bit of quick algebra leads us to the realization that there are 18 controls that we would need to control drag into a custom panel. Factor the panel preset bar, the graph, and the button to bypass all or flatten all, and we have 22 controls. Who wants to sit through all of that? Thankfully, we don't have to. If we right click on the Windows header or left click on the control icon in the Windows header, we find a convenient convert to custom option. Selecting it will then create a custom panel with all the same controls. We could then expand the panel and add controls from the other paging mic processing objects. Depending on what you're setting out to design, this can make short work of some larger endeavors, but don't use it as a crutch. Since we won't need this panel for the rest of this video, let's go ahead and remove it. From the panel section in the offline ribbon, let's right click it and then select remove. Now let's head back to editing our basic room controls panel. If we want to align our room one controls centered into a column, we can start by selecting all the controls while holding control on our keyboard or we can draw a rectangle around them all with our mouse. We then quickly see that they're not properly aligned, so now we can make good use of the Layout Align option. Take note that whichever control has filled in vertices will act as the anchor for any of the alignment options. If we prefer to align controls to one another using a different anchor, then simply select it with your mouse. Let's select to align their horizontal centers. If we're ever unsure of what the option will do, just take a look at the icon next to the option. Great, now that they're aligned and still selected, let's give them all equal vertical spacing to further give them a uniformed appearance. Now, what if we wanted the room one controls to be grouped together similar to what we see for the channels in our gain end object? This is possible using one of the advanced control options. Let's go ahead and select panel. Yes, we will have a panel live within a panel. Let's resize it approximately for the height and width of the controls to live within it. Next, let's select our room one controls and then move them to live within our newly added panel. We can center them within this panel by clicking on align and selecting center horizontally. We can reposition this panel within the panel by clicking onto the crosshairs and dragging it to our preferred location. Now for room 2, let's rinse and repeat everything we just went over. I'm kidding. If we click on the crosshairs of our panel and then use the Ctrl C and Ctrl V shortcuts, we now have the framework for room 2 in place. 
All we need to do to finish is change our text label and then carefully control drag the room two controls onto our custom panel on top of the existing controls. When prompted, we'll select to replace the parameter. Before testing this panel's functionality, let's look at the layout properties. We can click on a blank space to reveal the panel properties and head to the layout section. We can adjust the pixel size of the panel, or we can just simply use the vertices around the panel to adjust its size. A start location and start behavior is also available to specify where the panel will begin drawing itself on the display when activated. As an example, if we wanted the panel to appear at the location 00, or in other words, the upper left hand corner of the display, then out of the three start behavior options, we would need to select the manual start behavior. Specifying start locations for panels can be helpful when needing to have access to multiple control panels simultaneously. This makes it easier for the end user by not requiring them to have to reposition overlapping panels. Another convenient start behavior allows us to draw the panel center screen, which is what we'll choose for this demo. We also have the window style properties. There are several options here that allow us to specify how the window itself can behave. As an example, if we're creating this panel for a touchscreen display, then we may decide to hide the cursor. Or maybe we want to remove the borders of the panel, then we can choose none for the border style. Let's verify the panel functions appropriately. We can do this several ways without having to go online. From the custom panel designer, we can simply press F5 on our keyboard, right click on a blank space and select run panel, or from the ribbon, select launch current. From the panel section found in the offline or online design ribbon, we can left click on the panel to launch it, or right click on the panel and select activate. Other right click options include editing, removing, which we've already seen, renaming, duplicating, and exporting. With the panel activated, along with the default panels from the source matrix and gain n, we can visually confirm that each control is working as intended. Considering we removed the borders from this panel, let's consider other methods for closing it. We can use the Alt F4 command, or we can close it from the Windows taskbar as long as the option hadn't been turned off in the Windows style properties. Now we can save our work and move on to the next task. This concludes our look at custom panels. Thanks for watching.